diagnosis of autoimmune encephalitis uh, sometimes is uh, straightforward, but many times can be uh, quite challenging, especially in the acute setting. Uh, typically, uh, testing that we do um, in um, an effort to better clarify the diagnosis uh, includes imaging studies, uh, especially MRI of the brain with and without contrast. Um, uh, electrophysiologic testing such as uh, EEG uh, can be very helpful to determine whether there are abnormalities or um, um, uh, identification of potential um, epileptic form discharges that are often seen in patients that have encephalitis. And um, the um, um, most important test uh, is also the spinal fluid. Uh, looking at the CSF uh, is critical to uh, one, confirm the diagnosis, look for uh, alternative etiologies. Um, so, uh, of course, in addition to the comprehensive history and examination, those tests are the most important. In addition to that, we do serologic evaluations uh, to look for mimics and uh, to look for neural autoantibodies in uh, the blood and also in the spinal fluid. So that's essentially, in a nutshell, the combination of testing that is typically utilized um, in the diagnosis of uh, autoimmune encephalitis. Sometimes uh, the clinical uh, presentation at onset may not be uh, as revealing as uh, the patients uh, can present with a variety of symptoms. Uh, so um, it includes uh, uh, cognitive uh, dysfunction, neuropsychiatry, Gastric features, um, uh, in addition to often um, um, seizures. However, sometimes uh, the uh, presentation is uh, more um, challenging in that patients can have uh, superimposed uh, movement uh, disorders um, and uh, also involvement of the peripheral nervous system. Um, so it's uh, very important to also think about other conditions that are not immune mediated but rather it could be infectious, uh, neurodegenerative or um, uh, toxic metabolic, et cetera.